The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, is brought to you by, well, of course, you. If you want to learn more about how you can support the show, go to patreon.com slash expat2020. Hello everyone, this is the Arena Multi-Platform Gaming News Podcast, this is episode 7, I'm your host, Expat2020, along with my co-host, Dan the Retro Man, how you doing this week, man? Hello there, yes, yes, fine, thanks, how are you getting on? I'm doing good, man, doing good. The weather is starting to cool off a little bit here, it's been Mm. uh, rainy today, Mm. how about over in uh, UK land? Yeah, it's not too bad, Uh, the trees are starting to brown a bit. Uh, it's getting uh, definitely a bit more chilly. Yeah, it's been good. Been good. Yeah, I just want to say uh, to all of uh, my friends and family uh, out in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area and in California with uh, the wildfires, I hope everybody stays safe and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully uh, that gets contained uh, very soon. So it's a it's a real mess out there. I mean the uh, the air quality is really really terrible in the Bay Area right now, from what I've heard and some of the pictures I've seen. It's like the sky is just completely orange. Yep. Um, so uh, you know our thoughts go out to everybody out there. So uh, anyway, uh, before we jump into what we've been playing this week, I want to tell everybody out there that you can head over to the Arena Multi Platform Gaming News Podcast where you can find us on any podcast app as well as on Spotify. Just download your favorite podcast app or open Spotify and search for The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. Subscribe, follow us, post a review, and leave us questions, comments, and feedback if you like, if that feature is available there, and spread the word about the podcast. We also have a website on the Podbean app for iOS and Android services at expat2020.podbean.com where you can follow us and leave questions and comments as well. Also, if you'd like to support the show and get early access to every episode and listen ad-free, along with other perks, please visit patreon.com slash expat2020 for further details. You can also follow us on Twitter at the arena A-M-P-G-N-P. Finally, the podcast will also be uploaded to my YouTube channel at expat2020 Gaming. So you can go there to listen and subscribe and click that notification bell for future podcast episodes and also leave any comments or questions you might have that we might read on a future episode. Okay, Dan, so have you been playing anything this week? Uh, what have you been playing, man? I've been playing. Uh, I've got a problem. I've, I've developed a crushing addiction to Dragon Quest Builders 2 on the PlayStation 4. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an awesome. It's I played the first one. I like the first one a lot. Um, I'm sure if you've. Most people have heard of it, but if you haven't heard of it, Dragon Quest Builders is a mixture of Minecraft and uh, Dragon Quest RPG. So you have a, a building game with RPG elements, you get given quests to do, and you've got to build stuff for people, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, it's it's debilitating. Uh, it's, it's destroying <laughs> my life. Um, but it's uh. just so fun. Uh, it's very low challenge. Uh, it's strange, because you think like the flow wouldn't be that great, but it really is. It's It's very... It's quite soothing, quite comforting. Um, mm-hmm. Bright, colourful graphics, nice to look at. Yeah, it's good, good. And if you like me and you have no imagination and therefore completely suck at Minecraft, it's fun because it just tells you what to build. It says, go over there, build a giant pub. And you do that and everyone's really happy. Um, yeah. So when you say you have no imagination and you yeah. suck at Minecraft, what was yeah. the last thing you actually tried to create in Minecraft? Uh, this is going to sound quite elitist but that's fair enough uh i i i had a crack at making um king's college chapel from cambridge uh oh. you only think of cambridge you probably, you probably think of that that building that uh tall pointy building with a big glass front on it i don't know maybe mm-hmm. um i tried building that in minecraft uh it's not as easy as it, as it seems because uh scaling is a real issue because you're limited to the size of the cubes you have so um mm. but uh yeah that's the last thing i tried to but what about you how much experience have you had in minecraft uh, a very little, actually. I tried to uh, build uh, Pac Bell Park uh, oh, or right. AT and T Park or whatever you want to call it now, the uh, giant stadium in San Francisco. But uh-huh. that was the last thing I ever tried to to do on 
you know, in Minecraft, but I never really finished it. So oh, amazing. But uh, I I really want to play Minecraft Dungeons, though. I've oh, yeah. heard some good things about it. So yeah. Yeah. what have you been playing this week? This week, I'm still playing uh, Tell Me Why. I'm in episode two still, and I'm still in the Awe expansion. I uh, haven't had a chance to play so much this week because I've uh, I've been spending a lot of time. I, I created a, a, a second YouTube channel for uh, sci-fi movies and TV, and uh, I was posting uh, the first video into that. So I've been a little bit busy this week. Uh, haven't had a chance to play too many uh, games, but uh, still playing episode two. Uh, the story and tell me why is really intense. Yeah. Um, just, just like the, uh, life is strange stories. Um, yeah. you know, the telltale type of games, um, and the awe expansion still chasing the boss around the, uh, you know, the, the main building in the game. Um, right. So I'll probably try to get that done later this week. I think so. Um, like I was saying before, it's a uh, very Alan Wake centric in the expansion. Okay. Um, you know, lots of tie ins to the Alan Wake story. So it's pretty cool. I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, it was very much control. Yeah. So, and I, I don't know if you heard the, the news, uh, the, uh, that expansion that's supposed to be yeah. coming out. Apparently people that had oh, yeah. the ultimate edition were able to unlock the, <laughs> The expansion pass, yeah. Yeah, weird. So, uh, uh, and now, you know, the remedy and everybody's trying to backtrack on that. And it's, uh, you know, it's not looking too good right now. So we'll see how that turns out later. But uh, oh, it's a bit of a mess, that. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the weekly news beat uh, this week. So we have... In the weekly news beat this week, we have four stories. And this week, uh, of course, uh, one piece of the puzzle has been uh, completed. Uh, The Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S was revealed. (laughs) And now we have a release date and the price for, for both, actually. So... Uh, the Xbox Series X and the Series S will be released on November 10th, and the Xbox Series X will run for 500 US dollars, so 499 actually, and the Series S will run for 299. Where I think in uh, the UK they were saying that it will run, the Series S will run for 249 pounds. Bargains. Yes. So. What I want to do first is kind of go into the specs of both the X and the S so we can compare kind of uh, the similarities and the differences to the two. And then we'll kind of talk about the price of the Series S and see how that's going to be competitive in the market. But uh, just bear with me for a minute here. I'm going to read some of the uh, specs Uh on the storage first. So the Xbox Series S comes with a 512 gigabyte SSD compared to one terabyte for the Xbox Series X. So that, I think, is... I don't like it. Yeah, way too... I mean, look at at Call of Duty. Uh, I mean, it's like over 150 gig. You know, uh, I'm really surprised at this. I would have thought that with next gen, they would make the, the lowest uh for example drive at one terabyte and then the the base w- or the the high end would be at least two terabytes um so yeah i i think that's too small well it's because they chose to use ssd which is still you know relatively yes. expensive so yes yeah that's why you got screwed out of that but yeah i mean like that's ridiculous because i mean master chief collection on the the current xbox whatever that's called uh oh, it's massive that's like 110 gig. Yes. For a 20 year old game with yeah. improved graphics. Well, it's it's a bunch of games included, the Master Chief collection. So but Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean. Mental. Yeah. It's that's I, I was surprised at that. I thought it would I thought it would start at one terabyte at least. Yeah. So anyway, but more on that, uh, the Xbox Series S also supports the Seagate storage expansion card for up to one terabyte of additional storage. 
While you can use other uh, USB 3.1 hard drives to store games or play previous generation titles, games that are optimized for Xbox Series S and Series X must be played from the internal SSD or a Seagate expansion card for optimal performance. You know, wow. And these cards are expected to be quite expensive, possibly as much as a few hundred dollars a pop. So, yeah, I don't know about that. that that's that's one negative on my end. <laughs> well, as, I mean, as it stands, you're going to get about eight. Well, for the Xbox Series 1S 3X Tricky, you're going to get like four games in your hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, and then you're gonna done. have to you're gonna have to like delete it <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. it's ridiculous and you know because they keep making these games look so much nicer that that's all going to take up more space yeah it's, it's well ludicrous. maybe hopefully the like on the xbox interface hopefully they're going to change it kind of like the playstation interface where you have the library yeah. where you can just you know everything that you have in your collection you know that you purchased or something. You can you can download it back into your drive. Yeah. Oh, sure. You know, hopefully they're going to do something like that. Yeah. Oh, I want to play this. We know how crap Microsoft servers are. So it's like, oh, I want to. Oh, I, that was a good game I had. I'm gonna re, I'm gonna play that again. Oh, maybe tomorrow or Thursday. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, it, the idea of like just deleting it and re-downloading it. If you could be re-downloading like an 80 gig game off Microsoft, let's be fair, horrendous servers. That's a commitment. That's an investment of your time. That's yeah. Oof. Yeah, that's that's the one thing I don't like about the the downloading uh when it comes to the Xbox Xbox games. Yeah. I mean, like what you were talking about with the Master Chief collection. I mean, it, it downloads the entire game again in every whereas, resolution available. Yeah, whereas like on PlayStation for example, I mean, you just get the the patch or yeah. you know, yeah. you don't have to have the whole file yeah. like 150 gig downloaded again I, I just don't understand that and then you have to have extra space for validation and installation as well so if you've got 100 gig in your hard drive you go brilliant i can have that microsoft uh, the xbox will go no you can't so i've got to download that 100 gig i've got to va validate it and then install it so you'd loads more extra space on top of the space needed for the download it's mental it's yeah i hope they, they i hope they change that i mean uh they're supposed to be like in probably October, or November, the new interface is supposed to be coming out. And, oh, cool. you know, the Xbox Series X is supposed to have another, uh, a different upgraded type of interface. So hopefully that will, you know, uh, yeah. address those issues. We'll see. Okay. So uh, on to the games. Uh, it is expected that the Xbox Series S and Series X will play the same games. The main difference well. being that people on. Series X will get better quality graphics and frame rates due to the increased horsepower. For first-party games from Microsoft, these games will likely all work on previous Xbox One, Xbox One S, and Xbox One X systems as well. For third-party companies, they could support only Xbox Series S and Series X out of the gate. Both consoles will support Xbox Game Pass too, so the titles in that catalog, including backwards compatibility games, dating back to the original Xbox, will be playable. Wee. Additionally, Microsoft's game streaming service, xCloud, is expected to be available on both systems, so players may not even need to download local files to their hard drives. So, uh. yeah. so Xbox All Access, uh, for example, uh, this is uh, one of the upgraded services. So with yeah. this new console generation, Microsoft is moving closer to the smartphone business model with its Xbox All Access program. Mm. Microsoft has confirmed it will sell an Xbox Series S for $25 a month and the Xbox Series X for $35 a month under the subscription program. People are familiar with the idea of paying off their phones over a period of time, and Microsoft is betting that this will translate for consoles too. Microsoft has been conducting subsidized console tests since the Xbox 360 days, but the company appears primed to focus more on its time on this on it this time. Uh, mm. With Phil Spencer even saying that all access will be quote critical unquote to Microsoft's next gen strategy. So you can pay it off in one lump, lump sum, or now you can actually uh, pay month to month. Do you ever pay it off month to month? For me, uh, no, no, I mean, like, no. what, like, if someone does rent this thing, yeah, they ever finish paying it because they're getting quite a lot for that twenty whatever it was dollars a month. 
Is that just a continual thing until you die, or after like two years you've paid off the Xbox and you get to keep it all? That's that's a good question. I mean, uh, I I think it's you know uh, once <laughs> once that two years is up or whatever it is, I, yeah. I, I guess you're finished. So yeah. that, that that is an excellent that is an excellent deal. Yeah. Um. Um. I mean, yeah, Microsoft Game Pass alone is I don't know how much, but uh, for that it's worth that money for that alone because uh, game, Microsoft Game Pass is phenomenally good value. The Game um, Pass for console is nine dollars and ninety nine cents a month. Uh, okay. Ultimate is fourteen ninety nine a month. Right. Xbox for uh, Xbox Game Pass for PC is four ninety nine a month, but. Uh, Due to one of the stories we're going to be talking about later with EA and yeah. uh, for oh, PC yeah. only, uh, it's going from four ninety nine a month to nine ninety nine a month. So, yeah, right. um, but that's still a bargain. I mean, I mean, yeah, it is. Uh, and, and then you get a, they give you a console on top of that. I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, so one more thing here. Let's just go into the specs, uh, like CPU, GPU, things uh-huh. like that. Xbox Series X has an eight. Uh, Series S, I, I should say, has an eight-core AMD Zen 2 CPU at 3.6 gigahertz. Uh, the Series X has an eight AMD, uh, eight-core AMD Zen 2 CPU at 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, GPU, the Series S has AMD RDNA 2 GPU uh, with four teraflops. Whereas the X has the AMD RDNA 2 GPU with 12 teraflops. So uh, RAM, uh, the Series S has 10 gigabytes of GDDR6 R, uh, RAM. Whereas the Series X has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 SDRAM. Uh, SDRAM. So performance target, uh, the Series S is uh, 1440p at 60 frames per second up to 120 frames per second, whereas the Series X is 4K at 60 frames per second up to 120 frames per second. And storage, we talked about that, 512 gigabyte SSD for the Series S, one terabyte for the Series X, uh, also an SSD. And uh, both have the one terabyte expansion card slot, uh, the Series S has no optical disk drive, so it's all digital. Dun-dun. Yes, whereas the Series X is 4K UHD Blu-ray. Oh. Um, so, and then of course, uh, both have cloud gaming, uh, Project X Cloud, backwards compatibility for both, uh, from the original Xbox all the way to Xbox One. And uh, the price, of course, as we discussed, uh, the Series S, uh, 299 US dollars, whereas the Series X is 499 US dollars. So, Dan, let's talk now about this Sorry. price. Um, yeah. How competitive will this become in the market, you think, for the S? 299. And in the UK, 249 pounds. You can't buy a Switch at 249. How much and, is a switch in the UK right now? Uh, I think a switch is like a switch is like two seventy, still two hundred seventy pounds. Wow. Uh, so that's I mean that's 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 a very good move. But the downside is having two units, two SKUs, is going to absolutely just fragment your market. It's such a bizarre thing to do. Mm. Um, but price wise, yeah, I mean that's an excellent price, an amazing price. Um, yeah. I mean, those numbers you just read off, I, I don't know what any of it means or hey, what what that means, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be quite quite a, an appealing thing for most people. Well, I think basically what a lot of it means, especially the CPU and the GPU, I mean, it's starting to get more closer to, you know, a typical gaming PC. Yeah. But uh, uh, that's that's all I read from it. But uh, yeah. Um, what do you think about this being like... Um, a hot seller for somebody who wants a second console. I mean, say like even a PlayStation five, uh, purchaser that, you know, wants to have a second console as well. I mean, this could be the second console, you know, at that price point. I mean, it's interesting to see, like you said, like a lot of the games that they're making now, uh, for the Xbox, can we just re-highlight the fact that Microsoft are horrible at naming consoles and they deserve (laughs) everything they get. They are the 
freaking worst at naming consoles. Dan, it's Series X, Series I, you know S. That's I don't <laughs> care. The new, the new irrelevant Xboxes. I know you don't care. I, just why? Just they've got. Oh, right, sorry. One second. They have fleets of people in boardrooms discussing this for months on end, and someone went, "Yeah, that's nice and incomprehensible. Let's call it that." <laughs> Um, uh. so, uh, interestingly, they said that a lot of the games they're making now for the Xbox One S will just be straight over ported to the Xbox Series One SX. And like, that's, that's interesting because, uh, Series X, Series S. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's interesting. So, um, yeah, that, that's good. Well, I, but what, what's in it for the consumer though? Cause well, I don't need, I need to see a side by side of like what's happening on the current gen Xbox and what the lower range next box, next Xbox is doing. Well, I just think for, for those that are in the Xbox ecosystem, I think this yeah. is an, an exceptional deal. Yeah. Especially for the S. I mean, and, and for those that are just getting into the market or yeah. thinking of buying a console for the first time. Yeah. Um, where maybe their family members have had Xboxes and have been in the the ecosystem. I think this yeah. is a perfect deal. Um, I, mm, I well, I still think for that casual game, they're going to be snared by Nintendo. But yeah, yeah, you might be right. Uh, but yeah, the idea of having a second console, a two, four, nine. I mean, if you can play a slightly watered down version of Halo Infinite or whatever else the Xbox is going to have at some point, uh, yeah, that's pretty damn appealing. Um. Yeah, especially like a PlayStation player that that wants yeah, exactly. to like a, a guy like me that you know I love PlayStation I like I love Xbox I, I yeah. I'm a multi multiplayer you know and a multi platform type of player so I yeah. I want to have both systems so I mean the the if I get the PS5 yeah obviously a second console you know the Series S would be really appealing so yeah yeah no definitely it's it's cool yeah if you want to see what the fuss about the new Halo is then you can get the uh, the simplified version. But uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. I know that it's causing headaches for developers, though, because yeah. you're essentially. It's not just a case of making a game for the Xbox Series X, uh -huh. and then just turning down the graphics a bit, and it will run on the Series S. Mm. That's not how it works. So I know that, like, the developers are going, "Jesus H Christ, this is a massive pain in the ass." Uh, sure, it benefits consumers, but I think it'd be interesting to see um, if it's some sort of mandate, maybe by Microsoft saying, "Oh, you, no, your games have to run on both." Yeah, uh, that, that'll be interesting to see. I, I don't know how that's going to turn out, but uh... yeah, it'd be interesting because, like I said, it's it's not. I mean, what's the point of pushing on this late, the latest, greatest version of the console, and then having to make a not as nice one for the people who don't want to plump out for the main? It's also really weird having them come out at the same time. Mm. I don't get that either, because traditionally you'll have your main flagship for the for the early adopters and the people who want to spend the money, people who want the latest, greatest tech. And then later on down the line, you go, okay, great, we've, we've established this now. Let's release the budget version, as it did with the Xbox One S. Yeah. Having it all come well, out there's... at once is really weird. Yeah, I just think it's they're trying to appeal to many different types of you know situations and people i, I don't know uh, like you know if you don't if you don't want the disc you know you want a digital version yeah. you want something cheap then yeah. that's for you the s but yeah. if you want the power if you're a, a techie nerd the x is there for you as well i i guess you know so but then might we'll you, see might, but, uh, might you just not be better with the current the xbox one s in that situation because that's now dirt cheap and yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, but yeah. I think they're discontinuing. I think they've discontinued yeah. the the Xbox One X yeah, now yeah. as well. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so, my last question on this uh, before we move on to the next story is, uh, which also uh, deals with uh, Xbox. But uh, what do you think PlayStation's move is now? I've been seeing a lot of uh, streamers and gamers on Twitter, and uh, yeah. there's been some uh, news stories out there popping up that uh, PlayStation is now, uh, they're in the boardrooms and they're scratching their heads and uh, they're thinking of changing their prices now because of what the prices of Microsoft that have been revealed uh, you know, have shown. So uh, what do you think PlayStation's going to do to uh, try to bring their price uh 
down close enough to that 300 range, especially with the digital edition. What do you think? Uh, that's all they have to do to win. So we've seen Microsoft. Can they do that though? I mean, can they yes. do that? Can- yes. Really? Yes. You really think? Yes. So you really think that the digital version of the PlayStation will be 300? Uh, I don't. Well, no, because the, the, the specs are the same. No. The, the machine, so the, machine the speculation has- right now is yeah. the digital will run for like 400 yeah. and the the disc version will run for 500. Yeah. They don't have to. All they have to do is is match the premium one, the Xbox S. The Xbox One S. Oh, frig. God damn, I hate Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. So you're talking about the X. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> match the X. Yes. Yeah. All I have to do is match that, which was which what the PS5 was designed to do, right? So, like back back in 1995, right? Uh, Sega's presenting the Saturn, and they go, "Oh, the Saturn's going to be this, this, this. It's going to be three hundred ninety nine dollars, right?" Yeah. The next speech is from Sony. Sony walks out on stage and says, "Yep, Steve Race, yes, two nine nine, drops the yep. mic, yep, done. The Saturn is killed day one. <laughs> it's dead out the gate. Yep. That's what Sony remember that E three, yeah." Yeah, Sony's going to do that this time around. They're going to come out and they're going to say, oh, the Xbox One... Shh, I've done it again. I'm going to cry. The new Xbox X is going to cost four nine nine. Sony's going to come out and go four four nine and walk away. Hmm. Okay. The lower SKU isn't a concern to Sony. They've got no interest in that. They don't need... Uh, I mean, maybe in time, but it is, it is a, it's a shrewd move by... Microsoft for sure having the the, the simplified S, drip down cheaper yeah yeah, yeah the cheap right. version yeah. um that's a very shrewd move and I don't know what Sony is going to do but I don't think they necessarily have to worry about it. Interesting times for sure, man. Yeah, we will see in the near future. Hopefully, hopefully this coming week. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I'm telling you now, that's all they're going to do. They're not they're not going to match it. And they're not going to be above it. So even if they shave off, like you know. Uh, 30 quid people are still gonna go oh this is still less than this because let's not forget like what is it four nine nine dollars right mm-hmm. that's a lot and if someone goes four four nine that's t- like 10 percent less wait check my maths something like that um so yeah i think that's gonna be that's gonna be the enticement that's how sony is gonna win this one around okay can they still win if it's five five nine hell no that would be suicidal yeah. they won't do yeah. it They've made so much money off the PS4. They, I think they could take quite a heavy hit to start with on the PS5. Yeah, because the forget- rumors out there now also are that the disc version could be 550 and the digital version could be 450. Well, that'd be suicidal. So that's not going to happen by any means. But I mean, let's not forget though. Uh, what well, as a cons- consumer, let's hope not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a console costs to make at day one. And what a console cost a company to make a year in are completely different things. So now it's you say it costs Sony. Uh, it does cost close to close to a retail price. So it's costing Sony uh, four hundred, and they sell it for four nine nine. Well, a year from now, it'll cost a hundred dollars less for the Sony to make. So yeah. the the loss they make at day one selling consoles is a lot less than they'll make further down the line. So I, I think they could afford to drop their price and make it competitive. That's yeah, that's that's what they'll have to do to to count this, and I think that's what they're going to do. I think you'll see within next week you'll see a four four nine, yeah, and uh, yeah, a runners up prize for the series, the cheap one Xbox Xbox cheap Xbox cheap and Xbox pricey is what they're called from from now on. That's how we're going <laughs> to <That's> discern. <laughs> okay, <laughs> two machines. All right, all right. So the next story, uh, also related to Xbox, uh, Xbox Game Pass adds EA Play for free. Bargain. Absolute bargain. EA Play is joining Xbox Game Pass for free. Alongside the launch date and pricing reveal for Xbox Series X, Microsoft announced that EA Play, EA's game subscription service, earlier known as EA Access, uh, EA Origin Access, will now be included at no additional cost with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and Xbox Game Pass for PC. That means Ultimate members get access to EA Play on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S and Windows 10, while Xbox Game Pass for PC members get EA Play on Windows 10. 
The complimentary EA Play subscription with Xbox Game Pass will be available in holiday 2020. Hmm. So this means EA's biggest franchises, FIFA, Titanfall, Need for Speed, Battlefield, Mass Effect, The Sims, Skate, and Madden NFL will be available on Xbox Game Pass in a few months, making Microsoft's subscription a better deal than before. So, yeah. Uh, interesting. I mean, uh, I think some of the new titles, though, like uh, Star Wars Squadrons, it's coming out. That won't be available day one. No, uh, no. You still have to get, like, I think one of the ultimate packages to be able to get access to that day one. I think it's called EA Play Pro subscription for that. All right. But still, I mean, excellent deal. Yeah, uh, for real. more games coming to Game Pass. Yeah. Um just another, you know, another great uh marketing move on Xbox's part to uh to try to win more people over to uh, Game Pass. And so it was saying uh uh I was reading that uh now Game Pass has over 10 million subscribers worldwide. Wow. That's good. So uh and usually they don't, you know, uh show the those uh those figures but yeah. uh yeah 10 million members worldwide now and and growing so uh yeah you know, what do you think dan it's a, it's a, it's a stellar deal i mean 90 percent of ea's catalog is trash but there's some good games in there so yeah no i mean and again it's it's more stuff uh more stuff more stuff for your money brilliant i, I fully support it yeah. great great idea uh, i don't know where mike's was getting all this money from because <laughs> <laughs> like bloody hell uh yeah. but okay fair play uh, yeah, well they're excellent. they're huge though so i mean they've, no, I, they've got yeah, the money for sure <laughs> i don't know if they have but anyway yeah yeah uh, it's nice it's very it's a very good move um yeah yeah, yeah right yeah well this this could be an outlier i mean who knows uh in the future we could see like companies like bethesda and ubisoft and yeah. you know their subscription services might jump on board too and uh, that yeah, would be scary maybe. Yeah, 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 that'd be cool. Yeah. We're just moving further and further away from owning your games, which is quite a depressing thought, really. Mm. I mean, it's a matter of time for this. This is what it'll always be. They won't, you won't buy a game anymore. You'll just buy, you'll just rent a platform. Like, everything's going to be Netflix, essentially. Yeah, I think we're, you know, I mean, we already know this, 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 this generation will be the last physical media. This will probably be the last generation of you actually owning your games. Um, well, in the UK, isn't there a, a rental service where you can rent basically almost any game, kind of like Netflix was when it first started, oh, where you know they would deliver discs to your mailbox? Oh. Um, there's a service in the UK, I think that that does that. You can oh. rent games and just play them and then send them back or whatever. Or... Mm, I will investigate. Yeah, that's, yeah. Cool. Because I had I'd heard about that from some some people that uh, were playing games uh, in the UK and they had just rented them, uh, you know, because they didn't have the money to to buy the game, so they just rented it for a couple of weeks or whatever and played it. So. But, but yeah, I mean, won't even need that, you know. Next generation, uh, five years from now, when the Xbox disastrous name comes out, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I reckon they'll all be they'll all be anyway. That's the future. That's for that's for podcasting five years time. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on to the next story. And this uh, relates to uh, Nintendo again. So, Whee. yeah. So basically, uh, Nintendo is reportedly telling developers to make Switch games 4K ready. 4K yeah. ready. So Nintendo is making preparations for an upgraded Switch model and a beefed up games lineup for 2021. Several outside game developers speaking anonymously as the issue is private said that Nintendo has asked them to make their games 4K ready, suggesting a resolution upgrade is on its way. This is the latest of several proclamations from reliable sources that an upgraded Switch is in the works. In fact, the rumors had apparently become so prevalent by early in 2020 that Nintendo felt the need to announce that it had no plans to launch a new Nintendo Switch model during 2020. 2020 is swiftly uh, coming to a close, though, and with new Xbox and PlayStation consoles nearing release, the window for a 4K Switch has definitely opened. Mm. This revelation from Bloomberg, which is a, a very reliable source, was sandwiched in the middle of an article primarily about Switch supply, 
which has been an issue for the company throughout much of this year. Nintendo reportedly raised Switch orders to 25 million units in August, but when it became clear that it wouldn't be enough, assemblers began operating factories at 120% in order to attempt to meet the heavy demand. With the holidays fast approaching, Nintendo will need to have shelves fully stocked with Switch consoles, especially in light of the recent Mario-centric announcements. So... I don't know, man. I, is it, do you think this, I mean, 4K is a, going to become a reality? I mean, uh, I mean, what would they have to do with the Switch to be able to, you know, uh, to have 4K capability? I, I'm not the biggest tech nerd here, you know, when it comes to this, but, uh, you know, would it become more of a, a like a console style uh, uh, system? I mean, what do you think, Dan? So, well, there's so much. There's a lot to talk about here. Uh, well, so the answer to that question is more, more numbers, more bigger numbers is all you need to run 4K. Yeah. Um, well, I don't even know where to start with all this. This is nuts. Um, so I've heard reports. So I've had uh, there are reports that yeah, this this Switch Pro, if it is, you know, well, okay, let's let's assume it is going to happen. Yeah, let, oh, uh, let's. It won't be the Switch X. <laughs> <laughs> the Switch Series That's for sure. FX It'll be the Switch y Pro. Yeah. Famicom Super. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah, I've the heard GameCube rumblings. S. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'd buy that in a second. Sign me up <laughs> day one. Um, connect yeah. to GameCube S. Uh, so uh, I've heard this talk of it being uh, more of a home console-y looking thing that it won't have the portability, which. I know to a portable 4K games player, that'd be pretty, pretty damn impressive. Cramming yeah. all that into a, into a handheld would be pretty amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, but we need to talk. That's talk. what people wanted forever with a like a, a second generation Vita. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, Bring. Uh, we want a Vita two. When when's the Vita two yes. being announced? Cause coming come out soon, please. Yeah. The Vita two series FMV. Um, take my money. Yeah. Yeah, take it. <laughs> Um, yeah. but, uh, of course, right. Of course. So N- Nintendo are chronic liars. So the fact that they've released an, an announcement saying, yeah, there's no switch pro coming out. I mean, we, we all know that's a chronic lie. Yeah. Of course, of course there is. There's a, there's there, or is at least a switch two coming out at some point. Of course there is. The reason why they said that is purely so everyone buys a switch this Christmas. Yeah. Like, I mean. On January 1st, they'll go, all right, look out in September for the Switch 2. But before January 1st, they want to maximize Christmas. Of course, they're going to say, oh, no, 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 we're not doing it. Just keep buying Switches. Because, I mean, they're going to make a freaking killing this Christmas, an absolute killing this Christmas. I mean, forget the new consoles. Um, Nintendo's going to dwarf them both over Christmas. Um, Well, they're talking about this beefed up games lineup for 2021. I mean, even this holiday season, I mean, Animal Crossing, you know, people that don't have it yet, they're going to get it. That's going to be a big game this Christmas. But then this, this, again, we come back to this, like, aside from Mario, what's coming out this Christmas on the Switch? Bugger all. Just just a bunch of other indie titles, probably. Yeah. Yeah, So, yeah. And uh, yeah, but I mean you figure with this new switch pro or whatever it's going to be called, yeah. you know, you at least Zelda two could come out possibly. Yeah. Well, they'll, still they'll, got they'll Bayonetta three. Yeah. You know, Bayonetta three and then Metroid prime, Whee. you know, that, that could be a possibility for the, the next, you know, switch pro or whatever, whatever it's going to be called. Um, you know, because if they're going to say it's a beefed up game lineup, you know, they're probably got like at least two or three or or a, a Super Mario Odyssey 2. Yeah. You know, which I, I don't know if that would be likely, but uh, who knows? Oh, uh, invariably. Yeah. But see, I didn't, I didn't, again, we'll come up to my thing last week. Like, no one expects these things in 4K. Or no one, I don't, does anyone care? Does anyone want Mario in 4K? Does that even matter? I mean, Mario Odyssey looks amazing. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the children that play these games, I mean, they... And that's another thing. They've got them, no what, idea. Is this 4K? Yeah, they've got no idea whatsoever. I mean, yeah. if you're trying to appeal to the Xbox crowd and uh, the PlayStation crowd, they're going, hey, look, well, the our, our game's yeah. 4K. Yeah, they're going to go, well, I've already got 
friggin' 8K on my Xbox, Xbox Series Pricey. Um, and it runs at a billion teraflops per millisecond. So they'll be like, I don't need it. All of so. you Xbox fans and uh, Xbox users out there, please forgive Dan for his... Uh... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't care. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm sure it's great. Uh, all those numbers. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's traditionally, you know, they've never been... That's what they've never been about. But I think, yeah, the game's coming forward. Like, I mean, if they do bring out uh, the the Switch 2 or Switch Pro at the same time as Breath of the Wild. Obviously, there'll be, there'll be two versions of Breath of the Wild, a two, that they had with... Um... Wow, so they did it with... Twi- uh, did it with yeah, they did it with Twilight Princess, did it with Breath of the Wild, and now they're going to do it with Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah. But okay. Yeah, cool. All right, let's go on to the next story. So all the biggest uh, announcements at the latest Ubisoft Forward from this, uh, this last week. Mm. Uh, actually, though, first... Before the Ubisoft forward, uh, the Ubisoft CEO addressed the company's problems with diversity, inclusion, racism, and sexual misconduct. <laughs> so the most, the most si- significant announcement Ubisoft made was notably not part of the actual forward event at all. Uh, but uh, Yves Guillemont, uh, Ubisoft CEO, finally made a statement addressing the reports of racism, sexual misconduct, uh, misconduct and a lack of diversity and inclusion that have apparently been a part of Ubisoft's company culture for years. Quote, we are at the start of a long journey, end quote, Gilmond said. Quote, real change will take time, end quote. The company also announced uh, two new programs designed to increase mentorship opportunities for women and, quote, individuals from underrepresented groups, end quote. Ubisoft said on Twitter that Gilmond's message wasn't included in the main event due to timing constraints, but it noted that it would be added to the video when it's posted for on-demand viewing, which was so, uh, yeah. So that was before the uh, Ubisoft forward. So during the forward, uh, uh, the games, so the biggest announcements, uh, the Breath of the Wild-esque game called phoenix rising so this used to be called uh uh, gods and monsters but they changed the name of the game to phoenix rising gets uh uh, a gameplay reveal Uh uh showing off the greek mythology inspired world and the gameplay that looks heavily inspired by nintendo's the legend of zelda breath of the wild it it will be out on december 3rd on switch xbox one playstation 4 pc stadia and for next gen consoles as well so Mm, yeah, cool. So it's something I'm looking forward to, especially you know if it's uh, if it looks very much like Zelda. Uh, I'm interested in that. Yeah, no, that'd be cool. Prince of Persia: The Sands of Time is getting a modern remake. So the 2003 classic Prince of Persia: The Sands of Time is getting a a new remake in 2021 for the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Ubisoft says that it's rebuilt the game from the ground up in its modern Anvil engine and that the remake will feature improved combat and camera controls. It'll be out on January 21st. That's a weird choice. It's a great game, but it's a weird choice. Yeah. Riders Republic uh, turns extreme sports into a massive multiplayer online game. So Ubisoft is taking extreme sports to an even bigger online audience with Riders Republic, a massive multiplayer game from the creators of Steep focused on all kinds of adrenaline pumping activities, uh, including including biking, wingsuiting, skiing, snowboarding, and more. Company promises huge maps based on actual GPS, GPS data from U.S. national parks and the ability to race against 50 opponents at once. It'll launch on February 25th, 2021 for PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Series S, Google Stadia, and PC. So Scott Pilgrim versus the world. The game returns the adaptation of Brian Lee O'Malley's iconic comic book series is returning a decade after its release and still unexplained removal from various digital storefronts. Yeah. It'll be out this holiday season for switch Xbox one, PlayStation four PC and stadia. It'll include bonus knives, chow and Wallace Wells character add-ons and the return of the extremely good chiptune soundtrack from uh, Anna Managuchi. So, uh, Rainbow Six Siege is coming to next-gen consoles this year. 
So Ubisoft's popular esports shooter is making the jump to the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S as well. The company promises that it'll support up to 4K and 120 frames per second gameplay by the end of the year with free next-gen upgrades for existing PS4 and Xbox One owners. The company also announced a new uh, country-based Rainbow Six Siege World Cup competition and a new season of content based around the Splinter Cells uh, Based uh, uh, around the Splinter Cells, Sam Fisher. Mm. So, that'll be interesting. Uh, Watchdog Legion will feature special Stormzy and Aiden Pierce missions. The upcoming Watchdogs Legion is getting a cameo appearance by popular London rapper Stormzy, who will be featured in the game with a special Fall on My Enemies mission out on October 29th. Additionally, Aiden Pierce, the bland, cap-wearing hero of the first oh, yeah. Watch Dogs. Oh, yeah, I remember him. Is set to return to the franchise as a playable character in an upcoming DLC expansion. I I'm surprised that uh, Marcus from Watch Dogs 2 is not uh, or hasn't been announced yet. I'm sure that uh, uh, probably a future DLC package will have him in yeah. it as well. So... And Hyperscape, finally, is uh, getting a limited time turbo mode. So Ubisoft is taking a page from Fortnite's book with a new limited time turbo mode in its Hyperscape Battle Royale, which, similar to Epic's Solid Gold mode, puts players in a fast-paced game where all weapons are the maximum rarity. Launches on September 15th. Wow. So yeah, I think uh, of all these announcements, I think the uh, Phoenix Rising looks really appealing uh yeah. especially if it's uh if it's anything to what uh breath of the wild was yeah. um and uh yeah i mean i'm i'm interested in watchdogs legion uh watchdogs legion um because it you know of the the fact that you can use any npc as a playable character that really looks pretty appealing i mean uh it's mm. something new in gaming now i think so I don't know. What do you think, Dan? What anything stand out to you about this latest Ubisoft forward, or anything about the comments of the CEO? <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing I'm most lo I'm most looking forward to yeah. from the is the the less sexual molestation of women in the workplace. I'm happy about that. That's good. I'm very much pro yeah. that. Um, uh, you know, uh, and all the other you know diversity. I think that's a brilliant thing. Uh, that's yeah. what I like the most. Um, yeah. I like the uh, the talk. Um, I was very, really, actually shocked um, about the Prince of Persia news. I, saw, I read that a few days ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong, but like Prince of Persia: Sands of Time is brilliant. The sequels are, are both complete trash, mm. but that first one of the trilogy is actually a really solid game. But I, I wouldn't pick that out, and I certainly wouldn't parade it around. Be, I, I imagine that'd be more of like a stealth release. Mm. Um, yeah. And then there was. Uh, so this, and also it was interesting. This this uh, Ubisoft forward they didn't mention uh, Beyond Good and Evil two, did they? No, there's been no update no. on that. That's been quite for quite a while, that's, hasn't it? That's probably still way off. <laughs> that's been in development for donkey's years now. That's very strange. At yeah, least no, I think, two or three years, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's not. Oh, you know, uh, there was rumblings of that back in the PS freaking three days, I think. Um. But yeah, no, some good stuff coming out of that. I mean, rest of it, I, I don't care about yeah, yeah, Splinter Cell and uh, no, I care about Splinter Cell. I mean, I don't care about um, Rainbow Six Siege and all that stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, well, that's that's more of a you know like an esports shooter. So yeah, and no, no. that's been out for years now. So yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting audience. that it's yeah, yeah. that it's Fair coming point. to the next gen consoles too. So uh, okay, let's go ahead and jump to our topic of the week. Topic of the week. Topic of the week, not your topic of the week. No, no, yet. not mine, not yet. No, no, no. Just the, the, <laughs> the topic of the week. Story. So, open world games. Yeah, Dan, yes. Tell me, of all of the open world games you've ever played, what what was your favorite one? Uh, the Ocarina that's the most of memorable time. to you. Ocarina of Time, the high rule field, open world, uh, just flawless design, interesting, engaging environments. Uh, how about you? Uh, well, of course, uh, I'm not as you are for retro games. I mean, I love retro games, but I mean, you know, uh, I'm more into the AAA, uh -huh. you know, newer releases. Uh, I'd say Assassin's Creed Odyssey was really, really exceptional. Oh, um, 
I mean, just the, the landscapes of all of the islands you would jump to, uh, uh-huh. just, a, you know, beautiful locations. Um, uh, but what I want to talk about here is, uh, you know, are open world games hitting a dead end? I mean, you know, there's some gamers out there that feel the sense of boredom in gameplay after, you know, open world titles. And, you know, they some are feeling that there's, you know, a, a, that these games are lacking a sense of creativity. Right. Um and and there is one thing that I have to agree with that on especially with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I mean, the map was just enormous. I mean, every Assassin's Creed game, I mean, it has become more enormous with each year, with each release. Uh with Assassin's Creed Origins, the 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 entire, you know, map of Egypt. Yeah. Um and then of course Odyssey with the entire island chain you know the greek islands you know Mm. um it's just that that sense of creativity in the sense that okay i have to go from this one island in the south i have to go like you know ten thousand meters on a boat (laughs) to get to get to one of the northernmost islands or close to macedonia yeah right and to do uh, a small, for example, <laughs> quest to help somebody with their chickens or something. So I getting mean, getting to the quest takes more time than the quest itself. Exactly. Yeah. Um. You know, I, I think the sense of creativity. If you're going to make someone travel that far, <laughs> make do better it, than chickens. Do better than chickens, man. Make it more of, okay, you know, there's some kind of political intrigue to it or there's some other big boss that you have to deal with or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my, my biggest pet peeve, I think. Uh, I mean, you know, when it comes to uh, scaling back open world games, for example, yeah. uh, like God of War or Tomb Raider, uh, where the puzzles and treasure hunts have depth, for example. Yeah. I mean, that's something I want to see more of. Um, I mean, like a game like uh, I was talking to one of my streaming friends the other night. He's playing The Witcher 3, and and, and he loves it. He loves the open world feel of it. Oh, good. Um, I mean, and there are uh, and there are a lot of uh, side quests that have a lot of depth to them. I mean, oh, that's God, yeah. something, you know, about CD Projekt Red that's very special. Yeah. Um, but I mean, uh, you know, the argument of quality, what must always supersede quantity, I yeah. think is uh, really important here. So what do you think of, of this? Um, you know, when it comes to open world games hitting a dead end or, you know, the lack of the sense of creativity and things like that. What, what, what's your take on this, Dan? Yeah, it it's, it's all, it's all true. It's all demonstrably true. You can see this as, as we, we go further for make more and more of these games. Um, so we have seen a boot a boon of these lately, and you know they're, they're they're popular popular genre of game, and I think yeah, a lot of it is just it's become quite cookie cutter. Like a good example of what what where we are now is like if you think back to um uh, the first two Batman Arkham games, if you think about uh, Batman Arkham Asylum and you compare it directly to the sequel Batman Arkham City, mm-hmm. there there is. There is a definite drop in focus and quality when you went to City. Because as we've noticed, as you said, uh, the shift to open world, there is there is a definite drop in focus. Yeah. You know, there's a, uh, they, they rely on having so much to do rather than quality focused, you know, story driven content. Yeah. And like the other argument, like, like you said, um, they keep going, oh, our map is three square kilometers. And then the next dev goes, oh, well, ours is six. The next yeah, it's goes, ours is right. And they keep having exponentially these exponentially bigger. And now you've got, oh, our next game is going to be the entire North American continent. And it's like, well, that's, that's fine. But A, you've got to fill content. And that's impossible. We're getting to a point where, I mean, Red Dead tried to get around this. So Red Dead 2 tried to get around this you know, lack of content, but having like spurious, uh, random missions. So on your yeah. way, you know, you've got a 10 minute or more horse ride from mission to mission. And on the way you'll find someone who's being mugged or someone who's offering like a very, very short quest just to break up that journey. Right. 
I think, yeah, those examples you gave as well of uh, Tomb Raider and God of War, they're really good examples because they're kind of pseudo open world. Like you're definitely being channeled, but the opportunity to explore and go off the beaten path is is there. Yeah. So I think I think that that's way more preferable to um, just having a massive open world map. One of the things yeah. that people well, rate. Oh, sorry, gone. No, well, like you were saying about Red Dead Redemption Two. I mean, yeah. like with The Witcher Three, of course. I mean, with all of the uh, the side quests on the way to those points. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, going to those message boards and then uh, picking up all these little side quests that you can do on the way to that area. Yeah. I mean that that you know that's another big point as well. So, I mean, I, I would love to see like the. If if there's a a very good fast travel system, yeah. then then that you know kind of uh, takes you know takes care of the argument about you know having to travel from all the way from one point of the map to the other. You know, once yeah. you get there the first time, then have a fast travel point. You know, but yeah, uh, I suppose. But it kind of trivializes it. It's like well, one of stuff like just random levels you just walk to from a menu because that's essentially all you're doing at that point. Yeah. So that the map becomes kind of redundant I mean, I've, got, I've got to admit that when i was playing the the outer worlds uh i got kind of bored and so i was just fast tracking between fast traveling between all the different maps and it, it did become kind of like teleportation the game yeah yeah it's it's a really hard thing to deal with and again we keep coming back to the idea of um games now are too long yeah so having these colossal play areas filling them with arbitrary arbitrary quests yeah. Um yeah, no, I think I you know, I think everyone, everyone who's played this game would want something tighter, focused, and shorter, rather than having like loads of just just generic crap to do. I mean, Red Dead 2 would have been way better if it was a half the length, because that was ludicrously long. That was too long. Um and yet it's a bit a bit more focused. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, also, yeah, it's a shorter, short. but with more creativity. With like, and side yeah, and creativity, and... yeah. Because, uh, oh, by the way, uh, can we can can we make do 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 better than chickens? Can we make that our podcast slogan? Because that's brilliant. That no. wants to, <laughs> that needs to be on a t shirt or something. That's the official arena uh, slogan: is do uh, better than chickens. Yeah, um, but yeah, we'll, no, we'll I, make some we'll make some coffee mugs with that on. Yeah, oh, <laughs> oh, sign me up. I'll have one. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, when people rave about Breath of the Wild, uh, Breath of the Wild, I'm gonna say, it, people, it's one of the weaker Zeldas out there. Deal with it if you want to. If you want to fight me on that, I will gladly uh, take you down. Uh, one of the problems with it is the fact that it had this massive map and there was bugger all in it. Um. So. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I definitely agree that we've 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 reached the peak now. We we from anything from here, it's only gonna be a a, a slope downwards. I mean, there's nowhere else yeah, to go. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what cyberpunk looks like. I mean, well, yeah, but again, that, yeah. yeah, like you said, it's going to be absolutely rammed full of meaningful content, which is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, it's interesting. Like, like Ubisoft gets a lot of stick, and probably rightly so, because all their open world games, they they are the same. They do feel remarkably similar. Yeah, and Valhalla's map is going to be probably even more massive Brilliant. than uh, yeah. odyssey <laughs> great it's gonna be as close a map nothing in it nothing to do um yeah. just and it's like it's yeah. like uh, artificial... take care of chickens yeah. <laughs> do better than chickens and there's gonna be uh you know chickens think... in the uh in the <laughs> british countryside yeah <laughs> be good fine great that's a great quest you got oh imagine that there are 984 chickens can you find them all uh yeah. no yeah Again, because of the idea of like artificially... you have to find them all to get like on uh, on the if you're playing it on PlayStation, you have to find them all to get the platinum trophy. Yeah, yeah and you get a new kind of hat. Yeah, a rare hat. Yeah, but again, it's the idea that it's just busy work to artificially lengthen the lifespan of your games just by making it generic busy work, which is never a good thing. Right. So yeah, so you change. You go back to a, a Tomb Raider stroke, uh, God of War, um, yeah. idea of a. Uh, semi-open world that's an awesome idea okay let's go ahead and move on so now it's time for dan's retro topic of the week retro topic, topic of, of the week, week. <laughs> um, um 
Well, uh, so, so what do you got for us this week, Dan? Yeah, I just want to talk a bit more about the whole Mario uh, 3D All-Stars and how it's becoming a bit of a debacle for Nintendo. Like, um, there's a news story this morning that one of the UK uh, online retailers called Base, Base.com. Base.com is great, by the way. Uh, check them out if you're in the UK. You want, if you're in the UK, you know about them. Uh, very competitive prices. Uh, please give me a discount, Base.com, for that free plug. Um, but basically, they sent out an email to everyone who's ordered a copy of Mario 3D All-Stars saying, we're not, we can't send you it. Uh, apparently, there is a chronic short supply. So Nintendo, uh, Nintendo being Nintendo, they're like, oh, we've got this new game. We're going to make 14 copies of it. And we're going to create artificial scarcity. We're going to put it in the news. Ha, ha, ha. Drive up the prices. Sell more. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Um. So they're, they're getting, it's been a double-edged sword for Nintendo, this, because A, they've announced this game, everyone wants it, it's going to be a huge seller, but they've said, but they've, they're have they not going to make enough copies of it, so brilliant, that's already screwed it, and already scalpers on eBay and Amazon are asking for like 100 quid for a game. By the way, if you're a scalper on eBay or Amazon, I wish you the worst death imaginable. <laughs> uh, I hope you, you get caught in a car fire, and it's a slow burn, and it takes you a long time to die, because that's what you deserve. <laughs> um uh, so that's so N- nintendo have already shot themselves in the foot by not meeting demand but this is what they always do they always they always have less than demand to generate press and generate hype about their games that's fair enough also the whole timed release of a game is bonkers mm. <laughs> like after the after what was it march 31st you can't buy it digitally Hmm. that's bonkers why yeah. not a physical release i kind of understand because that you, you know yeah. let's generate hype let's have it this short release and then we'll 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 take up the shelves in march and if you missed it you missed it unlucky but there'll still be a digital copy uh but now they're gonna take that off uh the store uh as well uh and there's a lot of people crying online because uh oh they just upscale they're not remakes we don't want remakes we don't want that. Don't remake Mario 64. Don't do it. We don't need it. The only good remake is the remake of Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3. They're the only good remakes that have ever existed. All other remakes are all right. I haven't played 7, Final Fantasy 7. I'm sure it's fine. Did we really need it? Did we need an upscaled version of 7? Probably. So, and other weirdness like that, like, uh, it's not, it's uh, it's and it's not in 4K. It's like, well, it's I've played the Mario 4K um, PC, unofficial PC port. It doesn't offer anything. It's slightly sharper polygons. If, on a game that old, it doesn't make any difference. Hmm. Bananas. So, but another thing, another point, this is really interesting because, um, so this is awesome. Oh, don't get me wrong, I think this is brilliant, but of course they've made some mistakes in meeting demand and of course the time exclusive. That's ridiculous. But it does question that next year is the Zelda 35th anniversary. Mm-hmm. So my question to you, is there going to be a Zelda All-Stars next year on the Switch? What do you reckon? Oh, yeah, definitely. Probably for the Switch Pro or whatever, whatever it's going to be called. <laughs> reckon, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you reckon is going to be in you it then? You bet. You yeah? betcha. <laughs> oh, right, fair enough. oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's what's going to be in the Zelda All-Stars? Probably, that, probably everything except Breath of the Wild. Probably, <laughs> that's a pretty safe bet. Uh, but I, yeah. there's talk of they're going to port Skyward Sword, which is the one on the Wii, which is actually a pretty good one. It's not the best, but it's a pretty good. There's talk of that being its own separate port. So I reckon that'll be announced next year, a separate port of um, uh, Skyward Sword. But I reckon if they're going to have an All Stars, they'll be they'll be the first two, obviously, because they take no making because they're done. They're out there already. Actually, no, because no point because. Because one, two, and three are all out on the online store anyway. So it's going to be hmm. Zelda 35 will be Ocarina of Time. It'll be Majora's Mask. It will most likely be Twilight Princess. And probably Wind Waker. All in one. Man, that's a lot of games. That's four, four games. games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. But do you know what won't be happening next year? Can I tell you what absolutely will not be happening next year? There will absolutely not be a Metroid 35th anniversary collection. Uh, Because as we know, Nintendo hates Metroid. 
and uh, uh, with yeah. the imminent release maybe of the uh the new metroid prime so metroid prime for sure will be a switch 2 switch pro release yeah that's nowhere near uh, and they're I'm still thinking, like yeah. hiring for it probably <laughs> fall of next year at the earliest i think yeah, yeah. So we'll see but yeah. but I think they'll listen. They'll, they'll, that's when they roll out Prime Trilogy. They'll say, oh, look, it's the 30th anniversary of Metroid. Here's the Prime Trilogy. Enjoy that. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, so yeah, Mario Troubles is my retro topic of the week. But still, I can't wait. I'm still, I'm counting down the day. Six days till that lands on my doorstep. I can't wait. I'm very yeah. excited about playing all those games again. Awesome. Yeah. Cool, yeah. man. Thanks, Dan. So next up is uh, games releasing this week from Metacritic. So Please. this week we have uh, six games on the list for the week of September 14th through 20th. So the first game on the list, uh, eFootball PES 2021 season update for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. So the eFootball PES 2021 season update brings you all the critically acclaimed features mm. uh, that won E3 2019's Best uh, Sports Game Award, uh, plus more. So, uh, for example, uh, Soccer uh, Simulation comes out on the t- uh, September 15th, actually comes out. So uh, uh, Splunky 2. Uh- can't wait for this one. So uh, I actually made uh, a video on my YouTube channel, Expat 2020 Gaming, for it was a preview video for yeah. Splunky 2. So if you get a chance, go check that out. Did you um, use the word hype in the title? <laughs> What's that? Did you use the word hype in the title? Is it called Splunky 2 Hype? Yeah, I think okay. I might have. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I, I definitely put preview in there. So. Oh, cool. All right, nice. <laughs> yeah. So Splunky 2 builds upon the unique randomized challenges that made the original a roguelike classic, offering a huge adventure design to satisfy players old and new. Mm. Meet the next generation of explorers as they find themselves on the moon, searching for treasure and missing family. Oh, very cool. So from developer Mossmouth, uh, action platformer 2D comes out on the 15th. Yes, uh, I, I really loved playing the first Splunky on Vita. It was really yeah. fun. That was good. It's uh, it's it's massive in the speedrunning community as well. Yeah, uh, there are some quality speedruns of it. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's okay. I couldn't get into it because the whole random nature kind of annoyed me after a while. But yeah, it's a solid game. Good game. Yeah. So coming out for PS4 and PC, the PC version will be out on September 29th uh, on okay. Steam as well. So. Awesome. Welcome to Elk comes out on September 17th for PC and Xbox One. So this is a adventure title. Welcome to Elk is a biographical adventure set on an island like no other, where every character you encounter has a story to tell, from the weird and wonderful to the dark and desperate. All the tales told on Elk are based on true stories of life on the road less traveled. Mm. So, yeah. So, kind of PC, PC style and Xbox One. Here's one uh, you might find interesting, Dan. Crisis Remastered. Way, that's officially a retro game now. That counts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On September 18th uh, for uh, PC Switch and Xbox One, the classic first-person shooter from Crytek is back oh. with the action-packed gameplay, sandbox world, and thrilling epic battles you loved the first time around. So um, action shooter, first-person arcade yes brilliant yeah good good stuff yeah i was actually playing crisis on uh, game pass recently oh yeah Uh, yeah it's really good so yeah crisis one two and three uh, are on game pass right now so yeah yeah yeah. Uh, Yeah. i played two and three on playstation plus i think on the ps3 um yeah well good games Okay, Dan, here you go. Super Mario 3D All-Stars, September 18th on the Nintendo Uh, Switch. I'm so excited. Yes. Oh, I can't wait. Exclusive. Yes. Brilliant. Yep. Play three of Mario's greatest 3D platform adventures all in one package. Play three classic games at home or on the go all in one package on the Nintendo Switch. System, jump into paintings in Super Mario 64, clean up paint like goop in Super Mario Sunshine, and fly from planet to planet. Brilliant. Uh, in Mario uh, Super Mario Galaxy. 
So. It's I mean, that's 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 game of the year. Uh, nothing else matters. <laughs> nothing this year matters uh, compared to that yeah, little September in, September eighteenth. Yes, brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but no online multiplayer, of course. Brilliant. Good. Yeah. No one cares. Good. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, rounding out the games uh, coming out this next week, uh, WWE 2K Battlegrounds oh, okay. on September 18th for PS4, Xbox One, PC, Nintendo Switch, and Google Stadia. So the world of WWE is your battleground with all new over-the-top in-your-face arcade action as your favorite WWE superstars and legends battle it out in outlandish interactive inner uh, environments around the world. So in sports, individual combat wrestling coming out on the 18th. So those are the games coming out for the week of September 14th through 20th. Uh, my pick uh Splunky 2. Uh, I'm really, really looking forward to playing Splunky 2, but I think I know what yours is, Dan. Go That's ahead. That's right. It's WWE Battlegrounds. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Although, <laughs> they, I, used to, I, used to, I used to quite like the WWE games. WWF back in yeah, the day. yeah, yeah. The WWE games are cool, yeah. Uh, but that, that's got weird cartoony graphics, hasn't it? Aren't they like caricatures? I think they're not, yeah, not photorealistic. So. Anyway, uh, no, obviously, yeah, Mario. It's going to be great. I'm very excited for that. Um, yeah, yeah, Splunky Two. That's cool too. That's cool. Uh, I yeah, I'm really cool. looking forward to Splunky Two. Yeah. yeah, I, you know, if if they were ever to make a Vita version, that would be awesome. But yeah, they probably won't. But... Well, they're still bringing games to Vita, aren't they? It's, it's quite impressive. Yeah. Still, yes, the shop yeah. gets updated every now and then, uh, which is yeah. good. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I'll probably play it on PS4. So yeah, when it comes so looking forward to that. Cool. Okay. So uh, before we conclude the episode, I want to let everyone know once again where you can find the podcast. You can head over to the Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast, where you can find us on any podcast app as well as on Spotify. Just download your favorite podcast app. Or open Spotify and search for The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. Subscribe, follow us, post a review, and leave us questions, comments, and feedback. If you like, if that feature is available there, and spread the word about the podcast. We also have a website on the Podbean app for iOS and Android services at expat2020.podbean.com, where you can follow us and leave questions and comments as well. If you like to support the show and get early access to every episode, and listen ad-free along with other perks, please visit patreon.com slash expat2020 for further details. Mm -hmm. On social media, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at the Arena AMPGNP, and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at expat underscore 2020, and on my YouTube channel, expat2020gaming, you can see my latest videos related to new game releases, game trailer impressions, as well as this podcast. You can also find me on Facebook at Expat 2020, and I have a Discord named the Expat 2020 Arena, where all of you are welcome to discuss anything and and everything related to video games, as well as leave questions and comments for the podcast. And finally, I am on uh, Twitch. I'm a Twitch affiliate, and uh, you can catch me there on twitch.tv slash expat2020. Actually, I'm taking a break from streaming at the moment, but you can still go there and see uh, a lot of my recent uh, highlights and clips from uh, my past live streams. And I also host some uh, some uh, really cool uh, streamers that are up and coming. Uh, so uh, please check that out as well. So that's it for me. Dan, uh, anything going on this week at the Center for Computing History? And uh, uh, oh, yeah. where can people find you on social media? So I'm still on YouTube. I've streamed a couple of sessions of uh, Dragon Quest Builders too. It's quite good. Uh, yeah, so I'm still at the Center for Computing History. We got some. We've got some videos coming out this week. Uh, a couple of friends of mine are making some videos about um, uh, some retro hardware. I think we've got a Philips 4000 coming out. Anyway, yeah, if you're computinghistory.org.uk, go there. There are links to all our stuff, and there's our YouTube channel, Retro Tech Archive, and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I've I've got a question. Yeah. After your, what does AMGMPM mean? 
uh, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. So on Twitter, for example, yeah. your okay. your title can only be like 15 characters long. Sure. So I had to abbreviate them. So oh, okay, AMP good. GNP means a multi-platform gaming news podcast. So the arena AMP GNP is our uh our Twitter page, so you can check oh, that's, that out. That's gonna be way easier to remember now because I didn't. I, I thought I thought it was like something they just automatically assigned you. Well, they do automatically assign you, but it right. it, it wasn't the the name that I wanted, and that uh, it it no. didn't. Uh, yeah, it didn't translate to the Arena Multi Platform Gaming News Podcast, so okay. I had to change that. So well, that's fair enough. That's cool. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, so to end the show this week, we are going to, of course, uh, spotlight an indie recording musician. This week's indie recording artist is indie rock multi-instrumentalist and composer Ziv Moran, based out of Central Israel, from the album titled Tail Lights, and the song is called Get Gone. So this is Expat 2020, along with my co-host Dan. This has been The Arena, a multi-platform gaming news podcast. And we hope to see you in the next one. So take care, everyone. Peace out. That's right. Do better than chickens.